are 14 and 6 since the start of the new year. That's great. Not quite as hot as their incredible 26 and 6 start to the season, but Boston leads the league in both three point makes and attempts. And when they are hitting this shot, they are nearly unbeatable, right? The Celtics, they are 19 and 1 when they make at least 40% of their threes, and they are 10 and 1 when shooting between 35 and 40%. Here's where the problem comes, though. When they shoot under 30% from three, they are just 2 and 6. And Stephen A. I know that you are not convinced that the Celtics can win being so reliant on the three ball. Why is that? Because I don't think that's what delivers you championships unless you're the Splash Brothers. That's why if this was Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, I'm all in. Because we've seen what these brothers can do. It's the greatest shooting backcourt in NBA history. But when I look at the Boston Celtics, I've seen too many times where they've been up and down. Again, we're talking about leading the league in three-point shooting attempts at 42.8. Remember, 47.2% of their shots are three-point shots. 47.2%. So I look at it from that perspective, and I'm like, you're leading the league in rebounds, that's great. You're leading the league in blocks per game, that's great. Three-pointers made, three-pointers attempted, seventh in uh, seventh in, in terms of three-point field goal percentage. I'm just looking at a Denver. I'm looking at a Los Angeles Clippers. I'm looking at others, and I'm saying, is living and dying with the three going to get that done? That's a question mark. Can they pull it off? Sure. And I had them to win the championship at the beginning of the season. I'm just worried about it. But they don't all the way live and die by the three. And I'm so glad, Stephen A., that you brought in the Golden State Warriors because a lot of people say, hey, the way that they shoot the ball, they shoot the most threes in the NBA, they make a lot of them. This is not a recipe for success. But what the Warriors had in their championship seasons where they were, you know, finalists, 2016, 2014, 2022, they had a top three defense. Mm -hmm. They were actually number one or number two in all of those years. The top three where are the Celtics in defense? They're number three. So all of the talking points are technically their threes, but as long as their defense shows up, they have a chance to win. So I have bought in on the Celtics being the best team in the East, and they have ability to win a championship based off of what we have witnessed in the past. This is the same rubric that the Warriors won off of. You're going to make me sit here on Super Bowl Sunday and start the day by agreeing with my dear friend what? Stephen A. Smith. No. Hey. Yes, yes, we're going to Listen, listen. It doesn't work. That's why I'm going to get yes. it. By the way, there's a, I know Malika likes to find these first. Yes, she does. And she know what she's doing, she's Stephen A. She's, very she's good calling us old and crotchety <laughs> because <laughs> we're saying, I got to see this construct. Malika, it may happen. It, yeah. it, at some point, it will. It's but trending re remember, that way. Remember, the, even the Warriors won that way only one time. One time. And by the way, Stephen A's right. They have not just the greatest shooting backcourt of all time, they have the two single greatest shooters in Stephen Clay ever. They, the Celtics don't have that. They're not built that way. But that is not Tatum and Brown are fine shooters. They're better athletes and basketball players, players in full. So they're reducing their own talents. And, they're and, restricting them. And, and the reason I bring up this, I get where Shanae is coming from because she makes compelling arguments even though I respectfully disagree. When I say 47.2% of Boston's field goal attempts are three-pointers, why do I bring that up? Because again, what did we lament about Tatum and Brown? You're going to put a pick and roll, pick and pop situation, working off the two-man team. They never do it. Here, it's your turn. Now it's your turn. This is the kind of stuff that we've seen under the, in, the, in, in the Missoula era. And then you got to take into account, no matter how effective and efficient their defense is, Janae, you know this just as well as I do. You got to take into consideration who you're going up against. Yeah, overall, in totality, going against the other 29 teams in the league, you're going to be this way. But when you're going up against the elite teams, you sure they're going to look like the number three defense in the NBA? One quick point, too. The Houston they're Rockets, constructed that way. The Houston Rockets oh, did this six times in seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Led the league no in defense. takes and... <laughs> They had no uh, okay, defense. and what happened? How many how many how many rings they wearing? Zero. That ap the approach is flawed, and particularly in the spring in May and June when those games slow down and defense is actually still being played again, reintroduced right. to the NBA. And the Celtics have some of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. Drew Holiday. I love the rim protection of Chris Stapps Porzingis. Yeah. I think there are only two other teams that are constructed just as good, or if not better. You've got the Clippers and you've got the Nuggets. They right. can come out. Well, of that's who I brought up. That's yeah, I know. I mean, it ain't then like I said. It ain't like I said. Uh, uh, you know, somebody else.